wow there is so much power in a woman especially when there are changes that just come unexpectedly or when there are challenges in face of challenges a woman can just rise up and be the hope to the family hallelujah a woman is a house of hope a woman is a house of power in a family in a household a woman can carry the family in face of challenges and preserve the family name in face in face of unexpected changes women we are powerful we see that even women like Ruth they are so uh, powerful in the way they turn things around in their households in face of difficulties in face of changes in face of trials and tribulations what is a woman a woman is a motivator to the household a woman is that person that brings hope to the people around her even though it looks gloomy the woman is there to bring out beauty out of nothing this is a woman hallelujah a woman like ruth a woman like naomi we see that ruth and naomi in the face of the deaths of their husbands they don't get drowned in tears of sorrow they have times when they are bitter they have times when they are in sorrow but they come out of it this is the woman this is the power of the woman the woman has so much so much potential we have so much potential in us that if we look deep in us even after uh, having some tears over uh, trials and tribulations that come our way there is so much power in us we have to tap it wipe our tears and be the light in a household and be the light to children to save the family name the family dignity the face of the family in 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 terms in in times of darkness we've all come through different challenges in our lives it can be death of a husband it can be death of a child it can be um, uh, maybe court cases of, of a husband, of children. It can be drug addiction in children or in a member of the household. It can be even uh, poverty. Maybe someone in the family, the breadwinner, um, has lost their job. And we become the light of the family. We preserve the face of that husband. We dress that husband. We iron the clothes. We, we make things beautiful. Sometimes out of nothing. We beautify things. This is the power of a woman. A woman has so much power to to change things around them hallelujah that's why men sometimes want to 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 show off their women they say that's my wife that is my sister this is my lovely neighbor uh, angela they want to show off the woman the woman uh, born to be beautiful carries beauty in them the ability to beautify things around them and women <laughs> we must 
not underestimate ourselves. We can go into lengths to turn things around in order to preserve the name of the family, the face of the family, the dignity of the family. We can go into greater lengths. We never know we have that power to walk that walk until a change, unexpected change, comes our way. Until a trial comes our way, a test, a test comes our way. We are not scared of tests. Women are not scared of tests. I'm not saying men are scared of tests, but this is us. I'm just focusing on us at this moment. Women are not scared of tests. And at the end of the test, we see that women are not scared either to testify, to give testimonies. Um, even if we look at male pastors and female pastors, male apostles, female apostles, even male, uh, males and female in general, we see that women are readily available to testify about their family issues, about how they overcome tests. Come on, somebody. Uh, we do this all the time. We testify because we come through tests. How do we come through tests? There is that power in a woman to beautify things even when things are looking ugly and to make everyone look beautiful and, and handsome around them and bring hope to people around them. This is what is happening in Ruth chapter 3. In Ruth chapter 3 with Naomi, the mother-in-law to Ruth and Ruth. They are in a place where they have had bereavement in the family. All the husbands in the family have died from father-in-law to the sons. And now we have a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law who, whose husbands have died. This is a big challenge. It is a big challenge. Because when, sometimes when the husband is there, you feel so secure and sometimes you take it for granted. The security that you have, you take it for granted. Until one day, some of us whose husbands have died, we, 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 we know this first experience. It, it, someone who has not experienced it cannot tell this story like the testimony of someone who actually has experienced the death of a loved one. These two women, their loved ones, had died in, in Ruth chapter 3. Their loved ones had died. Some of us, we have where our partners, we've gone to faraway lands to look for greener pastures, and we are alone. That security is gone. Some of us, we, 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 people have separated or divorced due to different reasons. And you find yourself alone with the children, sometimes with no child. But you want to beautify things. This is something in us women, to want that drive to want to beautify things and to bring hope to everyone around us. Hallelujah. So this is it in Ruth chapter 3. We have Ruth and Naomi. Naomi wants a beautiful home. Naomi wants to maintain the name of the family. 
Naomi wants to maintain the image of the family they read before the death of their husbands. This is Naomi, the woman. This is us. Hallelujah. This is Ruth, the woman. This is us. Hallelujah. These are women like us. Hallelujah. We have so much power in us. We can never... We can never let everything, anything die around us. Always, we believe in life. Maybe because we've carried lives in our tongues. That we, we have so much in us that there is, there is life. There is life in everything. Even in the death of their husbands with no children, with, with no children from the, from the daughter-in-law, Naomi believes there will be children. And she devises a scheme. We can go to greater lengths to beautify the image of the family. This is what Naomi is doing in Ruth chapter 3. What she does is I don't think she even knew she had the ability to do this. I don't think she even knew she had the power or the swagger to walk this <laughs> I can call it the swagger to walk this walk because what she did you need the swagger to walk that walk. To, you need the you 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 need the um you need that thing that X factor. You need that X factor to do what she did because what she did she came up with a plan. Uh, in those days in uh, Israel. They were what we call redeemers, redeemer guardians, people that would, men of standing in society, that would uh, make the name of those men that die in young age, make their names go ahead or go on. They would take their businesses and continue to grow the businesses for them and they would take also their wives and according to their traditional methods and to, to make the name of the dead young men continue and after they would have children with this woman the children would inherit whatever their fathers would have left when these children grow older. So it was a real good plan. But in order, in order to save the image of the family, in order to save the lineage of the family, Naomi does it in with so much. Um, in, in, in a way that is out of this world. I mean, even th that was uh, years ago, centuries ago. But even today, it's something that you would only do when you have, uh, when you believe so much in yourself. Naomi believed in this instance, honestly, you have to be someone who really believes in what you are doing. Hallelujah. You, you, you must have that extra uh, thing about you. That means that Naomi had that extra thing and Ruth had that extra, extra thing in her. Hallelujah. These were women with the X factor. Women who would go an extra stride to beautify, uh, to, 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 to keep the 
name of the family going to keep uh, everything beautiful about the homestead, about the household, about, you know, uh, the, the how the, the lineage of the family is going to flow. This is what Ruth did. The, Naomi asked Ruth to go to Boaz, who was their close relative, the close relative of, um, of, of Naomi, the mother-in-law. Boaz was a redeemer, a redeemer guardian who, who they could also go to for him to keep the family name going so that he can run their household. But they did it in so much style that makes Ruth, Ruth chapter, chapter 3 so much interesting to read. So much interesting, so much interesting. And it gives us lessons that the people that we see sometimes in, in movies, in st book stories, in social media, how they propose to their husbands, how how they have uh, how how they meet uh, in in a way that we say, oh, they can't do that, they can't do that. Is that acceptable for Christians? Honestly, <laughs> if you read Ruth chapter three. You see that God is a God of miracles. And with miracles, there is no like, it's not customary. It's not our tradition. It's not this. But this is what happened. What happened is that Naomi, the mother-in-law, devised that uh, when Boaz, the guardian redeemer um, was a, was was had eaten and had some drink, and you know when you eat and you drink, when people eat and they drink, and they make merry, sometimes they end up lying down. This was a man in Israel. Maybe he was also having some wine because this was after eating and drinking that they, they thought it would be the best time. That's why I'm thinking maybe there was wine in the drink. So they said when he is now lying down after the drink and eating, uh, the daughter-in-law should then go and lie next to him and uncover his feet such that when he wakes up in the in the happiness mood of parting he will then uh, go he will then do what they expected uh, some men to do to see that this woman needed a redeemer this woman needed a partner it was to me it was i would call it a midnight proposal because this man boaz woke up at midnight and found the naomi's daughter in law ruth there next to him He was, he, he, he couldn't uh, know, he didn't know, maybe because of the wine, what had happened before, or what would the people say, because this took him by surprise, and he said it should be kept secret. By then he said he, he would be interested to be the redeemer if the one that was closer to him had said no 
So he said, go and ask the man, this man who is closer relative to, 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 to Ruth and Naomi. If he says no, he's the second one in line to be requested. If that man says no, a Ruth should come straight back to him. So this plan worked. But you don't do it if you don't have that, uh, that extra, extra uh, boldness, that extra courage, that, that will to go an extra mile to, to keep the family name standing, to keep, to keep the family uh, secure. Because the most important thing here is security. The most important thing they needed is security. Continuity of the name of their family, of their lineage. And this eventually happened. But this is the midnight proposal. Which makes uh, the story in Ruth chapter 3 but uh, I will come again with some other points from Ruth chapter 3 I see that there is um, besides the midnight proposal uh, which is so fascinating and tells me that um, as women we have power in us we can actually use for the good of the family, for the continuity of the family, for the security of the family, for economic and social security of the family, and political security of the family. We, 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 have, we have power in us. Sometimes, because of our traditions and customs, we are held back in making use of the of the potential that is in us to keep to give a home to the family a better home better security to the family we are held back by things like tradition we mix tradition sometimes women mix tradition with church they mix tradition customs with 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 God, the righteousness of God. And then they say, we cannot do this. We cannot do this. Oh, you, you cannot go to a man and show this man that you want security from, from them. Uh, Boaz was a man of God. We are encouraged to be, to be always equally yoked. These women, as far as they were concerned, they were, they were yoking themselves with, with, with uh, people also who are of God. So however they did it, did not matter. And it went into the Bible. As long as is it did not hurt anyone. They proposed. Ruth proposed. Proposed. That's why, I, that's why I'm calling it midnight proposal. Ruth proposed to, to Boaz from Boaz's bedroom while Boaz had been drinking and had slept in a, in a drinking state. She went in. She sneaked in. And she just lay there. She, she, didn't, uh, she didn't abuse him or anything. She just lay there next to him. That's how you see that a, the mind of God and our minds, there is, there is so much difference. And this story um, is here in the Bible. Be, as, as a noble story. Is a very important story. Is a story of weight. Is a story of value. Why? Because uh, Ruth is mentioned 
is a noble woman. And Naomi also, they are also seen in Israel as noble women. So whatever they have done, even the midnight proposal, they are still being called noble even after that midnight proposal. That's how we see that sometimes the way we look at things as Christians, eh, we, are, we mix things with tradition. We mix things with the patterns the world has developed. And when a woman goes an extra mile and does their thing in a different way, sometimes they are looked down upon and called they are not Christians. They are they are, they are doing things of the world. But if you see the story of Ruth here, this is what they did. And they still are being called noble women. And they did this even after a anointing themselves. So I'll talk about anointing. I'll talk a bit more about security versus a in the next uh, video but for now this is a summary of the book of Ruth chapter 3 I uh, hope you have learned something that women while we are alive we can go an extra mile to keep the image of the, of, of, of the family to keep the name of the family the dignity and standing of the family to keep the lineage of the family hallelujah we have the courage and the boldness in us hallelujah uh, we have the the power to beautify things around us and to give hope to people around us hallelujah and to turn things around for our families this is the lesson we are learning from women in the Bible, like Ruth. Thank you very much. Let's meet in the next video.